How do you actually brainstorm Facebook ad concept ideas or Facebook creative ideas? This is really challenging for a lot of people, especially those who are just getting started. And hopefully through this video, I give you a few different ideas that you can leverage to help you brainstorm some ideas. So before we get started, if you're questioning why am I credible to be teaching these type of things? Well, my name is Nick Terrio and I've done over $50 million in online revenue with Facebook ads for my clients. When I Facebook ads agency. And I also coach students who want, who run Facebook ads. Okay. If you're interested in either one of those things, then click the links below, have Nick Terrio run your ads or get mentoring by Nick Terrio. And one more thing before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now let's dive into the video. So I have a particular product for this video. And again, we're going to be going into kind of brainstorming some specific ideas for this product. Product. So I just chose a random product. Uh, it's a hip and joint supplement for dogs. And let's just say, for example, you were challenged with creating ads for this product. What would you do? Well, in this particular case here, the first thing is we're going to go through kind of like our research side. Okay. Any great research always starts off with the product itself and just starting off with what we know about the product what we already have as industry knowledge for that specific product and the landing page itself. So if you are a brand and you built this landing page yourself, you should already know a lot of this information right here in terms of the benefits of the product, the problems it solves. And, you know, in this case, you know, you should already have a lot of this knowledge. Also two desires, what motivates people to buy? Okay. So these are the key things that you want to look at. And if you already know this stuff, Go ahead and jot it down. If you don't know this stuff and maybe you are an agency who is working with a new account or something like that, and you need to figure all this out, then I like to start with the product page. Now, a big problem I see a lot of brand owners do is that, oh, I know my product and they don't do any other research. That's actually a death wish right there for your brand because you do not know your product as well as you think. You know your product as well from your perspective, but you do not know your product well from your consumer perspective or your market's perspective and reaching out to where your market's at today, not your customers. Okay, so two big things to look at. So you basically just want to go ahead and start listing things off. What problems does this product solve? Obviously, it's a joint supplement product and start digging deep. I like to look at all the description first. I like to look at all the product photos first and I like to look for problems and benefits. Okay, now the second thing I like to look at is all all of the reviews. Okay. This product has a hundred and thirty seven reviews. If I was working with this product, I would literally read all hundred and thirty seven reviews. Completely honest. Okay. And I'm also going to be doing a little bit of kind of reading people. Okay. Because desires, what motivates people to buy is not going to be clear. Okay. But when you start digging deeper into really understanding people through reading these reviews, you can start to see what motivates people. What motivated people in purchase, okay? For example, they've been seeing their dog in constant pain every day and they just couldn't like every time they looked at their dog they just wanted to cry okay so they're motivating to purchase to get that dog happy again and healthy again or maybe their motivation is they love when their dog comes jump on the couch at night with them and sit on them and like takes a nap with them and cuddles with them but because their joints are hurting really bad it can't jump anymore on the couch and it's and their desire is for that dog to jump back up and and sit and you know, like to have that connection with their dog and the cuddles in that case right there. Okay. That's their motivator to get that again with their dog, but they can't anymore due to um, the problem of the bad, the, the bad, um, you know, like hip and joint. And then the benefit of this product is that it's going to fix those hips and joints. Okay. Very simple. So I always like to start off with just very simple, just looking at the product page and looking at the reviews. Now, how is this going to turn into Facebook ad creative ideas? Just sit back and relax and wait because the first thing you do is to get ad concept ideas is just immerse yourself full of information and knowledge, okay? Because what's gonna do is you're also gonna start getting some ideas just by watching this, okay? So like, for example, let's say that story right there of the dog jumping back on the couch, okay? You could easily show a dog struggling to jump on a couch and like showing the, the person on a couch very sad, okay? And the dog sad. And all of a sudden you introduce this product and all of a sudden, boom, the dog takes it. And then boom, you know, it's like happy on the couch, chilling with the person and like everyone's happy. Okay. That's something I literally just thought of on the fly right there. 
okay you start getting ideas when you immerse yourself and like just saturate your brain full of information on this particular product that you're leveraging okay now next thing to do is you want to identify a couple competitors because you can get a lot of good information but if you built your brand yourself and like you built all your product page and all of your marketing material yourself then you're gonna be really biased so it's good to start looking at competitors okay so here's a competitor for this specific brand let me just go right here, petwellbeing.com. And they may or may not be a competitor, but you know, they uh, they produce, you know, same kind of like supplements and stuff like that. So I'm gonna just search hips and here we go. Boom. All right. So not necessarily the same mechanism, where like this one is like drops, where our mechanism is a you know, kind of like a chew slash yeah, like a little treat where our mecha uh, where this mechanism is more of a um, drops. Okay. Now, is there anything in here that maybe we could leverage? Honestly, I personally like our product page better, but let's still take a look in here. Okay. Cause they actually have more reviews, 419 reviews. So likelihood is that it's probably actually has more purchases and stuff like that. And we can go ahead and look at a few of the problems, the selling points, things like that, that's going in here and then read the reviews. Okay. Look also too at the ingredients, look at the instructions, directions, and how it's supposed to be used and stuff. And all of this can really help you out with getting some more just information that you can list. And again, read all 419 reviews because that's where you're gonna start finding a lot more kind of the same thing, the problems, the benefits, and the desires, okay? Now, next place I would go for this, and I would literally do all of this. If I was running this as a client, I would literally search all of this. Next thing I would do is just hips and joint supplements for dogs, okay? Now, I'm about to get overloaded with a whole bunch of different products that are in this specific niche, okay? Now, this is also another place full of, I mean, look at this, 26,000 reviews, okay? And obviously at some point, you you know, it's gonna be a little bit harder to, to do all that, but what am I seeing here, okay? I'm seeing some more benefits, problems it solves. Also too, a little bit of visuals too as well, like kind of like showing off key things, you know, that we could showcase. Um, all of this is stuff that I'm, I'm taking notes on, okay? And then same thing, I'm gonna kind of go about, about this item. I'm gonna look at, you know, this kind of sales page right here that Amazon has set up for it. Looking at all of this, okay? And I'm pulling information, okay? I'm saturating, I'm, I'm understanding, you know, the key things. What type of dogs are they showcasing? Are they showing like German Shepherds? Are they showing just kind of like your average dog? Also too, it's showing a variety of dogs just to make sure it doesn't feel like it's branded to just one dog. That's also another something interesting right there I would look at, okay? And then, yeah, and then go through the reviews. I would look at the one-star reviews and I would look at the five-star reviews. Why do I look at the one-star reviews? Because it shows me particular weaknesses in this specific product that we can leverage, okay? And I would go through a lot of these products. Like I pretty much go through all of these products right here to just kind of get a good glimpse of what I want, okay? Now, next thing is YouTube, okay? Now, YouTube, a couple different things you can do with this, okay? So the very first thing with YouTube is that you can start off with something like, you know, hip and joints supplements for dogs okay you can start off with just the basic okay now this is kind of like solution aware people people who are actively looking at solutions okay and i would basically watch these videos and just look at best supplements for dogs top five best joint supplement dog reviews 2022 okay cool a couple different things here what visuals are they showcasing you know they're showing a dog and a person playing tug of war right there you know this one they're showing a dog running okay and they're not just showing a dog running they're showing a dog running and looking happy in that case okay that's interesting oh these are pain points it's talking about okay essential elements in every chew talks about a bunch of the features don't really care what are the benefits improves mobility and energy okay cool so that's kind of like what they're talking about so i would watch a lot of these videos that's been hours watching these videos okay now the key thing here is also to look at the comments okay because the comments is also to gonna be another heavy place where it's real people talking about real problems they're having, okay? Now that one didn't really have the greatest comments. Uh, here's another one. Ooh, here we go. We have nine comments on this one. You see right here, I've given it to my dog for a few years. Without, without it, she can't walk on one leg due to knee problems. Okay, cool. So, you know, it's talking about specific problems, benefits, and consumers telling stories. All very important stuff. So I'd spend hours watching YouTube videos, learning the visuals, 
pains, the problems, all of that good stuff there. Okay. So we'll once we do the very granular search of just like directly of what we're looking for on YouTube, the next thing I like to do is also search based off specific problems I might be having. Okay. Or my dog might be having. Okay. So I could say something like, you know, you got to picture yourself in someone's mindset who doesn't even know yet supplements for dogs. Maybe just like my dog back legs are shaking. My dog's back legs are weak. Okay. Gave out. My dog's back leg is limping. Okay, cool. Like what are specific problems that dogs might be having? Okay. So, all right, here you go. Here's something right here. Watch these videos because this is also another place of what people might be searching at that problem aware standpoint. They're aware of the problem. All right, what problem are they having right now? Well, my dog's limping every time we go play. Okay, cool. You see, you can see literally people talking right here about specific problems they're having with their dog as well, and it's helping them. Okay, so this is some stuff that I would look at. I would also look at like maybe you find two different products. So like let's say for example you're with uh, this brand, which is da -da -da, Pet Wellbeing, and then our brand was called macondo pets i would also look at on youtube macondo pets versus you know well-being pet well-being uh, i recently bought a tv for my house and you know originally i had an insignia and then i bought a like samsung oh, oled something like that qled you know big big ass tv basically okay and i did a lot of reviews of like those tv reviews of like hey insignia versus samsung um and then like samsung versus other tv i was looking at i was looking at some very specific uh, kid, like content basically to do my research. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, I just have this blank right here, but you want to fill in everything you find. All right. You should also start having a lot of ideas now. Okay. We already saw, we had the, the, you know, the dog jumping on the couch, being upset. We now have seen dogs running and playing and like the different activities people do. You know, you might even be able to do something like this, like different dog you know i don't know games or like maybe even things to do with your dog there we go 20 games activities and fun things to do okay that's literally gonna give us 20 different things we can articulate in an ad um, i'm not saying we're gonna use all 20 but we'll probably tool like one or two where we'll go and like come there hey we see tug of war is really popular amongst our, our consumers let's go showcase a person really happy and a dog really happy playing tug of war okay Boom. So that's all I do. Now, next one is ChatGPT. Okay. I'm finally starting to get on the ChatGPT bandwagon just a little bit, not too much, just enough. And this is also another place you could be asking a lot of these questions. So like, let's just, for example, bad hips and joints on dog. So I'm just basically starting to search and look a little bit further into it. Okay. If your dog has bad hips and joints, be painful and deliberating condition that can greatly reduce their quality of life. Ah, so now we're starting to look at the quality of the life for the dog due to this problem of bad hips and joints. Okay, so here's one. How can my dog, my dog's quality of life be affected by bad hips and joints? Why am I searching this? Okay because I want to basically start to look at the bad side, the problems people are experiencing, okay? And trying to see if I can find that. Ooh, okay, reduced mobility. Dogs with joint problems may have difficulty moving around, climbing stairs, or jumping up onto furniture. What did we say at the beginning of the ad? Jumping up onto furniture, okay? Limit their ability to explore and play, really good. Reduced activity. Dogs with joint problems may become less active and have less energy to engage in physical activities they once enjoyed. Ah, okay. That's, that's, that sounds really bad right there. Like imagine if you love to run Facebook ads every day and now you can't do it anymore. You have bad hips or bad problems, stuff like that. Loss of independence. Dogs with severe joint problems may become dependent on their owners for basic activities like going outside or getting up from a lying position. Or all dogs with bad hips joints may experience a reduced quality of life. So it's important to work with your veterinarian to manage their condition, help them stay as comfortable and active as possible. Possible. Cool. So like just start digging deeper, start asking a lot of questions in research. There's no one way to go because honestly, I find that all the basic questions that are given out in courses and gurus and stuff like that are just so shit when it comes down to research questions, because you honestly just need to go very curiously into it and just start asking a lot of questions. Why? What about this? What about this and that? Okay. Then the next one is ad inspiration. Now I like to use foreplay. Foreplay is my favorite way to get some ad inspo. And look, let me tell you, when you try foreplay, play once you never go back okay so 
foreplay i absolutely love it now this is not sponsored or anything like that but i will say if you do click the link below i do get a little bit of a kickback if you do purchase it but i do use it as you can see right here i have um, all the audits we do in our agency i build a board for literally every single client our client boards every single one of our clients has a board for foreplay and then obviously my main folder which where we actually saved our own ads to foreplay and made our own portfolio i can easily share with my clients okay but in this particular video we are going to do the discovery feature now What's really cool about this discovery feature is that I can, the discovery feature is every single ad that was ever saved on foreplay. Okay. And what I can do now is I can search up, for example, dogs, for example, every single ad that has something with a dog in it is going to pop up. Okay. Now, why is this important? Because look how much ad inspiration I just got. Okay. So let's start looking over some of these right here. Okay. I'm not gonna look at every single one, but I can start pulling these apart. Okay. Now this is a waterproof dog bed, prevent stains as always. Okay, cool. So it's just like some UGC and stuff, but interesting. Okay. What about this UGC? I can see the type of girl to use inside the UGC ad. You know, is it a guy? Is it a girl who performs better? That's a big thing. Also another girl. Okay, cool. Showing off the dog leveraging this particular product. Now, again, that's not our product, but it allows us to see how other products are being advertised with dogs as well. Okay. What are the scenery? What's the scenery? What's the, what happens in the first two or three seconds? What type of dogs are being showcased? All key things that we need to look at here. Okay. Now I'm not saying that foreplay is going to replace all of this. In fact, like if you got that impersonation from me in the last 30, 60 seconds, then take that out. But I use foreplay as part of my process. Okay. Foreplay is just part of the process to achieve that overall result. Okay. So we have researching on our own website. We have our competitor sites. We have our Amazon, our YouTube, our chat GPT and foreplay. So we have a load of information now. Okay. And now what we can do is we can also start looking into a further for a few other common ad ideas as well that I'm gonna give you guys to just further dig deeper in here. But right now you should have a good flow of ad concept ideas to leverage. Okay. Now, um, quick easy one for y'all, direct attack. Okay. So for example, um, direct attack is basically is if you have other competitors on the market, find a weakness amongst those competitors. And if you do that weakness better, so like for example, if all of our other competitors are not using dog chews and we're the first ones with dog chews, we're going to call it the fact that how all the other uh, competitors have really difficult time giving those vitamins because the dog just simply doesn't like it. Or we have a chew that you can easily love, taste just like a treat, and they're so excited for it at the end of the day. It's easy, easy, easy to give to them, and it saves me so much time not having to put droplets in our mouth or something like that. Boom. So direct attack. Another thing to look at when you are doing your research right here, is there any beliefs we must handle? Okay. Now, a belief is, a belief is pretty much just like an objection. Okay. Objection to the ad, um, but not necessarily the ad, objection to the product. Okay. So is there any beliefs we need to hurdle? Okay. That's a big key thing there. Now, I personally don't really know as a dog owner for pretty much my whole life, I personally don't really know any beliefs or, you know, decision making systems I use when I make a um, decision for my dog besides as long as I, as long as it works for him and as long as it's, you know, it, it, it gives him a better quality of his life. Okay. Now, something else I would like for you to do is, is go through kind of like the features, performance and benefit of performance and desire. This definitely also help you out. So for example, let's just say we're doing dog chews. One is a chew. What is the performance of it? easily give to your dog okay what's the benefit of this performance saves time in the morning when in a rush boom and then what desire ties into this particular feature of to um, of this chew right here is i don't know uh da -da -da. that's be more of a desire for just like time basically Okay. Boom. So I recommend looking at all the features of your product and going through what's the performance of that feature, what's the benefit of that performance and what desire types ties into that. Now, market awareness, this kind of goes back to the, the particular questions you're asking at each stage. So aware means I'm going to buy your product, buy your product. Okay. Product aware is what is the best dog chew for supplement for joints? 
And then solution aware is basically I'm aware of solutions to fix my dog's joints. Okay, boom. And then problem aware is my dog has joints that are bad. Boom. And then, or actually that would be, uh, da, da, da. that'd be more like, yeah, no, that'd be joints that are bad. Unaware would be like, my dog is limping. All right, you have no clue what is the reason why. It could be, he could have a, you know, splinter. He could have, you know, twist an ankle, something like that. So go through your market awareness and then come up with ad concept ideas at each level. So we need to start off with that conversation at that level. And then next thing we can do is start writing down our headlines, okay? Here is where it's like what desire you're appealing to. Well, maybe quality of life for my dog, better quality of life, okay? What market awareness you're appealing to? Maybe it's problem aware. They're aware of the problem, not aware of the solution. And then I would start writing down like my headline patterns, okay? Now headline patterns right here, let's just say for example, uh, measure the speed of the claim, okay? Here's just a few of them. These are not all of them, but if you want more, read the book, break the advertising and get all of them. Speed of the claim, boom. And then basically just write down a few different headlines. Now this would be your hook or your main headline that goes on the creative for your Facebook ad, okay? Um, and then once I actually have this specific headline, then what I would do is basically go ahead and write the rest of the ad. But I start off with the headline uh, first. So uh, measure the speed of the claim, maybe four weeks to happy hips. I don't know, just giving you guys an example. Uh, four weeks to happy hips. Okay, cool. I like that. I actually do like that. I'm measuring the speed of how quickly and then happy hips is basically just saying like, you know, happy hips and joints. All right, boom. All right, cool. Now, I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but I do like it. It's not saying the solution. It's just talking about how the problem is being basically fixed in four weeks, okay? And then lastly, something else to give you guys some ideas is this is all kinds of there's really ways to increase desire here where we basically can put the claims to action. And that's basically like if we claim that our product will get your dog happy hips, I want to show the bunch of dogs with happy hips, basically hat funds, dogs having fun and stuff like that. Um, experience day one of ownership, that may be just how easy it is to give the dog the particular um, treat. Um, how to test the claims. Hey, take this for, you know, even two days and watch as your dogs go a bit faster or like watch your dog's immediate proof um, starts to help. Benefits in time, it's basically just stretching out how long, um, you know, over 30 day basis, maybe even a maybe even a year basis of how those benefits keep coming, testimonials, experts approving, like all easy stuff, compare contrast, proof superiority, that's just comparing against other brands, how easy it is to get into the benefits. These benefits literally just simply take one out and give to your dog in as little as 10 seconds a day. It's super easy. Analogy, maybe just create some type of analogy of how your product works. Before you're done, summarize and put your guarantee of work, just other things like that but these can all be different scenes within your video. I'm not saying you need to use all of them, but all of them should give you ideas of different types of like scenery and different things to film. So it's gonna get you like a lot of ideas overall. And then from here is where you wanna start stitching things together. Now, when you were doing your ad inspiration, you should have been able to see a lot of kind of common formats people were leveraging and from there, you can kind of use those and stitch in your own material, okay? With things you found through your research of your product. So um, yeah, guys, I know this was kind of a, a little bit old all over the place, but this part of the advertising process is not really sexy and it's, well, it actually is kind of sexy, not gonna lie, but it's just, it's very chaotic and you kind of just have to stitch everything together, but that's as like raw as I could get with you guys for this. So. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And my name is Nick Terrio, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.